Hello, my dear younglings. Today we are going to help Martha in her search for the secret helper. Yes, yes, you heard right. We need to find the secret helper. The secret helper to our happiness. Here's what happened. Martha wrote to me about how she went with her parents on a trip to a national park two days ago, arriving early in the morning and decided to walk through the forest to explore the diverse plant life and enjoy the fresh air. Martha complained that she was very down and sad, thinking that the whole trip was in vain, that her day was ruined. But after an hour, she found it much more pleasant to walk the forest paths and asked me to help her discover why this was so. I know, but first, let me ask if anyone has an idea who is the secret helper that made Martha feel pleasant. Hmm. Anyone to answer? No one. Well, we'll try to find the solution together, like detectives. What could have changed from early morning or dawn to morning? Did she enter the forest? Maybe, maybe. We'll talk about that, but no. There's something much more obvious. This could have happened to her in the city too. Yes. Ah, you're listening carefully. She mentioned the fresh air. But I said this could happen in the city, where the air isn't exactly the freshest. What changed from early morning to... Who said that? Yes, the sun came out. Sun is the secret helper. And do you know what is the secret helper for the growth of plants, grass, and trees in nature? Did someone say water? Yes, water is significant for the life of plants, animals, and humans, so you're partially right. But if, for example, we look at a meadow in late autumn or winter when there's enough rain, we'll see that grass and flowers still don't grow. And why? What do we have less then? That's right. The sun. So, the sun is also the secret helper for the growth of plants, and now I'll explain how. The sun provides plants with the energy necessary for life through a process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants produce food and oxygen. Oxygen is necessary for us to breathe. The process of photosynthesis in plants would not be possible without the sun's energy. Ingredients involved in photosynthesis are sunlight, water and carbon dioxide, and these are the things that plants need to grow. Without plants, there would be no oxygen for humans and animals to breathe. Carbon dioxide, which is found in the air, passes through small holes in the leaves of plants called stomata. Do you remember when we mentioned stomata? Yes, bravo. We've already learned about them when we discussed how long we can go without water. I'm very happy when I see that you listen carefully and learn new things about nature from my talks. Plants take water from the soil through their roots, so just as you drink water from a glass when you're thirsty, a plant absorbs water from the ground through its roots. That's why it's necessary to water our plants regularly. Water moves through the roots, through the stem, and then to the plant's leaves. At the same time, the plant absorbs carbon dioxide and water. It also absorbs sunlight thanks to chlorophyll located in the plant cells. The sun's energy splits water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. In this process, the plant releases oxygen into the air. Since plants produce oxygen, which is necessary for the life of humans and animals, it is very beneficial for you, my dear friends, to often go on trips to forests and nature, just like Martha did. When hydrogen combines with carbon dioxide, it creates glucose, the food that plants use for survival. Part of the glucose is immediately used for the plant's growth, and part is stored in the leaves and roots of the plant for later use. Chlorophyll, a part that is found in plant cells, helps plants convert carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight into oxygen and glucose. In addition, plants use many other nutrients found in the soil as food. But the main helper for all this being possible is the sun itself. Since it's necessary for the growth and development of plants, the sun also provides food for animals, especially those animals that only eat plants, like deer. The warmth of the sun is important to most animals, the so-called cold-blooded animals. It's known that lizards bask in the morning to get energy before they start other activities. I just met my old friend, Lizard Joe, sunbathing on a large rock yesterday. Only birds and mammals can produce and retain energy from food internally, so you don't depend as much on sunbathing, but still, it's very important to you. The sun also affects the life of aquatic plants and animals. When the weather is warmer, especially in late spring and summer, 
algae become darker and more abundant. You know, if you go to the beach in the summer, somewhere on a river, you've probably seen a lot of algae that have covered the riverbed. This usually happens somewhere in the middle of summer when it's really hot because then the water level in the riverbed decreases. What did you say? How do I think the river level decreases in the summer? Well, that's because in the summer when it's really hot outside, the water evaporates and thus reduces its quantity. And during this period, rains are rare, so the quantity that evaporates is not replenished. And then, when the river level decreases and its flow slows down, algae have better conditions for growth. The sun and its energy, with its warmth, heat the water in rivers, lakes, seas and oceans, and provide conditions for the life of fish and other aquatic worlds, as well as the necessary visibility for hunting and moving fish. And what do you think? Does the sun have any bad sides and harmful effects? And for what is the sun the biggest helper? You're not sure, are you? But I see your thinking. Well, think about that. And now first let's see how people can still use solar energy. Have you maybe noticed some strange blue plates on some house roofs that somewhat remind you of the windows on your houses? Did you notice them? Oh great, I must admit I didn't know about them until I did some searching on my phone because, as I told you earlier, I haven't encountered people for a couple of hundred winters. But I must tell you I like how well you've designed those windows, or as you call them, solar panels to save the solar energy you can then use to power your machines, for lighting your houses, and even for charging these phones. I'm glad I'm charging this phone like that now. Well, yes, you're right. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see and talk to each other. Really a brilliant invention. It turns out that you humans have made some kind of artificial leaf, only it doesn't produce food for plants, but electric energy. And do you know what would happen if the sun was a little closer or a little further from planet Earth. What? Nothing? No. If the sun was closer to planet Earth, it would be too hot and life would not be possible. And likewise, if the sun was further from Earth, Earth would be all frozen and uninhabitable. Thus, the sun is at the ideal distance from planet Earth to provide us with light and ideal temperatures. Ideal temperatures for what? Well, for life. So, the sun is the main benefactor of life. It provides life to all living beings and plants on planet Earth. And now I need to tell you that the sun can also have harmful effects on people, animals and plants. These harmful effects are most manifested in the summer when it's really hot. So, for example, if you go to the beach in the summer on rivers, pools, the sea, or if you splash in a pool in the yard, you should spend the hottest part of the day somewhere in the shade. Otherwise, your skin can become red to such an extent as if you've been scalded with hot water. Sunbathing is still healthy for the production of vitamin D, which is significant for strengthening the body, but only in the morning or in the evening when the sun's light is of lower intensity. Also, the strong sun can harmfully affect animals, especially if they are left without water. So if you have a pet or somewhere meet an animal that no one can take care of, Give it some water and food in a bowl, because when it's hot, many of those animals cannot provide it for themselves. In my dear forest environment, there are enough trees to shelter from direct sunlight, and we have a stream where I can cool off and drink water. And for my forest friends and me to have enough clean water, it's important not to throw waste in the forests and around streams and water sources, because it can endanger our health just as it would endanger yours if you drank contaminated water. I advise you to plant trees or a fruit tree at your home and enjoy its shade and fruits in the summer. Let me ask you this. At the end of winter and the beginning of spring, what warms you and your friends up? What do you say? The heater warms you up. Well, you're right. But I meant when you go out into nature and walk, do you notice that the weather is warmer and the day is already longer? You notice well. And do you feel warmer when you go outside in the rain or when it's clear? When it's clear weather, of course. And what else? Bravo, and when it's sunny. So who do you think could be the secret helper as to why Martha felt better in the National Park as the morning went on? That's right, you're right, the sun is our secret helper. 
It is believed that exposure to sunlight increases the release of a hormone in the brain called serotonin. Serotonin is associated with an improvement in mood and helps a person feel calm and focused. They also call it the happiness hormone. And did you know that the sun is also a star? You didn't. Well, it is. And the reason why the sun looks so big compared to the small stars in the sky is that the sun is much closer to Earth than those distant stars. However, the sun is still very far from our planet Earth, so far that even light, which is the fastest in the universe and from which nothing is faster, and which we now see, traveled eight minutes from the sun to Earth. So since I started this episode, a ray of light has traveled to Earth. People once thought that the sun revolved around our planet Earth, but later they researched and came to the realization that Earth, along with seven other planets of the solar system, revolves around the sun. The sun is, by the way, the only star in our solar system. Some systems have two or three suns, but we'll talk more about that another time. And for us, this one, our dear sun, the source of life and happiness, it is enough. If you have any more questions about nature, write to me. I'll be happy to answer. Yours truly, Troll Mitros. Naturally.